Especially in times of conflict and division, there are those who will try to convince you to act against your own best rational self-interest. And it's sad. It's pathetic. It's it's disgusting. It's a uh, it's a, one of those. I, I am a fan of human nature. I am a fan of humanity. I am go team people every day. But I look at this and it's oh, one of those things about just humanity in general that die. Uh, yeah, you, you're not supposed to feel good about this. Is this is one of the features of human society that when things are bad, sometimes. Bad characters are brought out. Sometimes challenges reveal the best in humanity. And, and really, overall, that's probably the case. That we rise to the challenge. That in times of hardship, we see what we're really made of. And at the same time, given our present circumstances, we see the dark side of that coin and that there are people who will lie and cheat and steal and deceive and take advantage of your fear, take advantage of your circumstances to kick you while you're down. And it's not so much, it's not, it's not really kicking, they don't, you know, it's kicking you while you're, yeah, they'll kick you if they have to, to distract you while you've been stealing your wallet. But no, that's taking advantage of people while they are suffering. And the most emotionally manipulative, disgusting form of this that I see right now is the people who try to convince you to be less loving, to be less empathetic, to be more afraid. I hope I can strike a cautionary note today and tell you, look, just don't fall for it. And yes, I'm I'm thinking of the, the Twitter trolls who are starting to get under my skin. I'm thinking about the mask bullies. I'm thinking about the Trump apologists. I'm thinking about the people who are like Biden today. Trump is our first racist president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I'm sorry, Mr. Biden. Have you heard of Abraham Lincoln? And I don't mean the textbook version. Have you heard the horrifically racist things he said about black people? Uh, no, and, and Mr. Biden, if you were elected president, you would not be our second racist president for all the things that you did to justify racist criminal criminal justice policy when you were in the U.S. Senate, <laughs> you would not be, oh my gosh, Biden, our second racist president now. But there there are people right now, and it's even Joe Biden and President Trump who are doing this, is, and they are making this part of their message now. And I'm maybe not now, this has always been a part of politics, but in particular right now, there are people who want you to be afraid. I think about the, the, the protesters in Oregon, this is you know, part of my conversation on Twitter saying, look, if you support violence being used against people because you disagree with them. Don't be surprised if they're going to believe the same thing and violence ends up being used against you for your beliefs. But Adam, they're violent. They're looters. They're rioters. What about Adam? But, but what about this, Adam? Shouldn't you give up your empathy for this? Shouldn't you hate these people for this? Shouldn't you give up the love that you have for humanity because these people did this bad thing over here this one time? Shouldn't you give up your principles because these are bad people who don't deserve love and empathy? No. And in times of confusion and suffering, sometimes those voices are tempting. When you can't take the time as you might normally do so to fact check them, to logic check them, to go, no, no, love, love is still a beautiful thing. Empathy is still critically important to moving humanity forward. 
to a free society. No, 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 you cannot give up these basic principles. And as libertarians, as we are quick to point out, it is in times of crisis that your principles are all the more important. And these basic principles behind libertarianism, of, of the universality of the human experience, you, you are entitled to your rights because you are a human, not because you are a human who understands politics correctly, just like I do. No. It is all the more important in times like these, not just to stick to our principles that, you know, the, the non-aggression principle applies to every single human being universally, but the, the principles behind that, that no matter what evil they have done or even are doing, every human being deserves love and respect and empathy. If anything, the people doing evil all the more so. We learn from nonviolent communication that everything a human being says could be essentially boiled down to please or thank you. Every act of violence, every violent communication even, yes, using violence metaphorically here, is a tragic cry, a tragic plea for an unmet need to be met. Those who do the greatest evil in the world, it is, it is easy, although intellectually lazy, and a failure of compassion to say that, oh, they're just, it's just greed and, and, and power, they want power and, and they're just evil people. No, no. Even those among us who do the greatest evil in the world, the bankers, the politicians, the war profiteers, the special interests, the lobbyists, why? Why do they do what they do? Do we accept this intellectually lazy answer? Oh, there's just they're just bad people. Every now and then, you know, just one of them, instead of being stamped good, what they forget, they stamp evil and oh out they come from the factory. They're just evil people. No, that's not how it happened. And it is a disservice to reality, to freedom, to your fellow human beings to deny them that basic respect for their humanity. Do not let the voices of fear and bullying and dehumanization make you forget this fundamental truth about love and freedom. They do go hand in hand.